Packers of Health and Wellness. Awesome day in the woods here. So the compelling research paper I'm highlighting today should be front page news. It should be all over the internet. But as you know, our healthcare system is driven by big pharma and big money. So, well, you get it. But you know, I think I might want to take you down south first to meet a guy you probably know from junior high school history. And if his discovery is legit, we probably don't even have to go through this study at all. People have been searching for the fountain of youth for many centuries. Ancient Greeks believed that everlasting youth could be achieved by a blessing from Hebe, the goddess of youth. Anyway, they were all wrong, because here it is in Florida, discovered by this guy, Ponce de Leon, in the 1500s. More than Dixie Cups. Oh, <laughs> ah, I can't believe it. Give it a whirl. Oh. Can't hurt. No way be. We'll see how that oh, works. He took us through the fountain of youth. What are you done? 200 years old now, Tom? Uh, no, 500. I used to I used to date Pastor Leon's daughter. <laughs> Okay, the Fountain of Youth excursion was a blast, met some awesome people, had a lot of fun with the legend, but I'm starting to think those magical waters probably won't be adding a million years to my life, so might as well go over this study while we're here. Give me a sec. All right, here it is. Oops, no, wrong paper. This is Pfizer's revenue numbers last year. Let's see. Oh, oh, an all-time record, 100.3 billion. Wow, good for them. They're doing very well for themselves. Oh, here it is. Published in April 2022 in Frontiers in Aging. It's a study that tested the effects of vitamin D, omega-3 fatty acids, and exercise on the risks of invasive cancer. It was a five-year trial in five European countries ending December 2017. It included about 2,200 healthy adults aged 70 and older. <laughs> so, so there have been many studies on single interventions, stuff like vitamin C and heart disease or exercise and diabetes or iodine and thyroid function. Side hint, they're all helpful. But studies attempting to measure combined interventions are far less common. So with that, this double-blind randomized controlled trial. The research guys call that an RCT. The test groups were given either a single intervention, say vitamin D group one, exercise group two, omega-3 fatty acids group three, or combinations of two or all three. And in the end, the results were compared to a control group. I think it's important to try to vary your sources of nutrients, but kicking around my house today were these omega-3 oils and three different vitamin Ds. Oh, <laughs> and the fountain of youth water? Well, you never know, right? So let's forget all the numbers and graphs. The crux, and I assume it'll be no shocker to most of you, each single intervention had a small beneficial effect Two were better than one, and stacking all three together was the most beneficial of all. To put it another way, there's a predictable number of diagnosable conditions expected in any particular age group. In this study, researchers were looking for any diagnosable invasive cancer. Think cancer that has metastasized. And the greatest reduction in expected diagnosable cancers the group that had stacked all three together, vitamin D, omega-3, and exercise. So not unexpectedly, it seems that the more little things you can do to help the body, the better, eh? A few thoughts then. As a general rule, and I realize this is almost self-evident, healthy people tend to get sick less often than less healthy people. 
But makes sense though, doesn't it, if we look on a very simplistic sliding scale of functional health and wellness? I recently wrote a newsletter on this very topic, in fact. Well, it, it was 1995. So consider our health on a sliding scale from 1 to 100. From 100% vibrant health on one end to zero health or death on the other, the stronger, more vibrantly healthy person simply has a longer slide down the continuum toward unwell, if you will. Two, disease is something we largely earn over time with our diets and lifestyles. We've gone over this stuff before. There are exceptions, genetic predispositions, toxic exposures, and sometimes just pure bad luck. And no single study is ever definitive, certainly this one isn't, but the volume of evidence, both anecdotal and empirical, is a mile high and growing every day. Mother Nature laid down some really basic rules for good health, and if we stray too far from those, we always pay the price. Yes, drugs have their place, they're life-saving in times, but cells heal with nutrients. Sunlight, exercise, good sleep, clean food, water, all that stuff, we've gone over it a million times. And as is often necessary, especially these days, specific nutrient supplementation. This study demonstrated positive effects with just two added nutrients and exercise. To me, the concept that improved cellular health equals reduced disease would seem so obvious that I can't imagine that anyone could not grasp that. So what if we added other healthy habits? Increased zinc, increased vitamin C, etc. We know for a fact that vitamin D reduces the incidence of COVID. Big Pharma didn't tell us that, did they? On and on it goes. The prospects become mind-boggling when we consider healthy lifestyle, not drugs, as the road to vibrant health. Anyway, imagine the possibilities by taking lifestyle and diet seriously and starting early. So, links in the description to these studies and other cool stuff. Till we see you again, yours, Vibrant Health.